Welcome back to Introduction to Programming using C++. What we're going to go over today is a switch case statement. And I got a couple of examples I want to go over today. So the first thing is we have to look at our code here. And you see that I've declared three variables, one called numpos, value of, and letter grade. So when you're dealing with a switch case, you start out by writing the switch you're going to have an expression section here uh, and then you'll have an open bracket close bracket which indicates the body of the switch case so how does this work so as we continue and see the behavior of this so what will happen is with a switch case you're going to have a value that this will eventually execute uh, evaluate to and depending on your case statements it will actually execute the body of whatever matches. So for example, if we were to change this to case statement, so change this to five, what'll happen is this actually represents a five and it's gonna check, is case one equal to case five? No. So it's gonna skip. Is case two equal to case five? No. Is case three equal to case five? No. Case four equal to case five? No. And then is case five equal to case five? And since it is, then it will actually evaluate this statement and then uh, just put another uh, changed value to 20. And the next thing is very important. It's called a break. So if I didn't put a break here, then anything after this case will also execute if I had more cases. It's just you see the diff you see the example here. If this was a potentially a case one, okay, then because there's no break until case three, it's going to execute whatever is here, whatever the body is here and here and then it will break out of the loop okay so you have to be careful so there's two important components here one is you have to use your case statements and your case statements are similar to your if else ifs if you're not familiar with if else ifs I suggest you look at my video on uh, if else if which is uh, before these this video the other important aspect of this switch case is that for every case statement if you do not want to execute anything after the case or other cases then you should put a break okay so I'll give you an example so let's say this was I'm gonna say this is zero this is one actually so you'll see that once I execute this, this is going to be one and it's actually going to go through and I'm going to put a body here, case one and case two. Although it only matches case one, because there's no break after this example, then it's going to keep doing this one and this one. And then once it hits the break, it'll jump out or break out of the switch statement. So let's compile and run this. And there you have it. You have case one, case two, case three, and the reason for that is because it did hit case one. It was not, it was, it was, there was no break after case one, and it just kept going up to the break. So you have to be careful. So the point here is that you may have multiple conditions, and if you have multiple conditions that you want to handle then you wouldn't put a break you just want to put you know for conditions one two and three uh, I want to print out 
all this stuff. For conditions four and five, I want to do all this stuff and print this out and then break. And that's how a case, switch case statement behaves. The other aspect that you're noticing here is something called the default. The default will execute if all these statements are false. So think if else, right? If else if, else if, and then the final else. This represents your final else. If num pause is not equal to any of these integer values, then it's going to automatically go into the default case and then break. And that's the way it behaves. So let's, let's look at another example. So inside the switch, you can have an expression. I have a logical and relational operators within my expression. If I evaluate this, this will evaluate to actually one because it's true. And since there's nothing in one, it's just going to keep going and then see out hello. So if I compile and run this, So let's compile and run. Oh, I guess this evaluated actually to zero. So if we take the value here, oh, it's because we changed it. So if I put this back to 20, okay, it is num pause. So uh, that's why. So if I compile and run, okay, so that's that shouldn't be. If num pause is greater than value of, is this greater than that? True and val. Oh, so this is false. So let me just uh, change this. Okay. So if I execute compile and run, there you go. It's hello. So the reason is because this will ev eventually evaluate to true. It will go in here and there's nothing here. No break, go in here, no break. And then finally say, see out hello. The reason it was giving me nothing is because uh, this evaluated to false, but I should put something here to indicate that no matter what, you're gonna hit the default because everything else evaluated to false. So if I am going to run this, and I'm actually going to make this false, okay. So it's gonna say zero, is it case one? No, is zero equal to two? No, 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 no. There is a default. So we are going to evaluate, we're going to actually hit this and then break. So if I go to execute, compile and run, there it is, hit the default. In this particular example, this was evaluated to false, which means it's a zero. And all these cases do not match. They're not equal to zero. The only one left is the default. And if I did not have a default, you don't necessarily have to have a switch case with, with a default then it wouldn't do anything, it would just jump out of the switch case. Okay, jump out of the switch case. So you can have an expression uh, with a mix of logical and relational operators. And here is, I can also have uh, any type of, it has to be an integer literal. I mean, it has to be an integer data type. So one or zero is going to be an integer. Uh, NumPos is an integer. I cannot have a 3.0. You, you're not allowed to have any values that are not integers, such as doubles or floats. It's got to be uh, an integer value. So if we look at this example, okay, if we look at this example, then it's going to say, okay, do I match 
my one? No. Do I match two? No. Do I match three? Yes, I do. So it will see out hello. So if I compile and run, it's going to say hello. Okay. Now, if I didn't match any of them, and if I just put zero here, then it's going to hit my default because remember anything that if all the other statements are false then and if there is a default then it will hit it will hit the default okay it will hit the default compile and run this there it is default hit and then the last example is a different example using uh, a char okay a char get this out I don't need this and with a char you can also check for characters one character okay because the case statement has to be of integer data type a char is actually an integer data type and I have a lecture on that uh, if you look back on why a char is an integer data type but for now we know that we can use letter grade which is a char data type and we can have multiple cases as compared to a char so case A then it'll say you got an A if case is B you got a B and then otherwise you got a C again you don't have to have a break statement and you don't have to have a default so if I run this it'll say you got an A because I initialized letter grade to A okay I initialized letter grade to A so if I did P nothing's gonna print because none of these statements are true so compile and run and it is empty okay because nothing got executed now my preference on using selection statements are I always like to use if else if else if some of you may prefer to use the switch case uh, one thing that I will warn you is that switch case is not as flexible because your case statements have to be of integer data type uh, so you really don't have a lot of flexibility whereas if an if else you have a lot of flexibility right so um, I hope you understand switch switch case statements here uh, and if you have any questions, I can be reached at parttimeadjunct.gmail.com or you can always check out my website at www.parttimeadjunct.com. Thanks again for listening and I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to check out my video on the difference between integer and char, which there really is no difference. Char and integer. Char is a integer. Thanks.